This is Chris Christensen, and back in 2006, I started a simple project, a project to try and introduce more people to the Bible through Bible study called the Bible Study Podcast. It's a simple name and a simple idea. Each week, every week, we study one chapter of the Bible, talk about what it says and what that might mean for us today. To listen now, go to lifeaudio.com or search for the Bible Study Podcast on your favorite podcast app. Your home is more than the sum of its parts, and creating a truly extraordinary space is about more than picking the perfect products. That's why the experts at Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery are here to help you throughout the entire process to create a home that's as unique as you are. Bring your vision to us. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram at build.com slash Ferguson. Life Audio. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. Do you ever feel like you want to know more about the Bible, but that it's kind of hard to understand? Do you want to share your faith with your friends, but have a hard time figuring out how to do that? Do you want to learn how to connect the Bible to your real life? Well, then this is the show for you. My name is Rachel, and I'm your host. I've been a children's pastor for a long time, and one of my favorite things is helping kids learn how to understand the Bible. I think that sometimes people think that the Bible is just for adults, but God actually really wants kids to know about Him. So on this podcast, we're going to learn all about God's big story and how He shows Himself to us through the Bible. As we learn together what the Bible stories actually mean, we can learn how to live out our faith in our everyday life. Life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. I'm your host, Rachel. Have you ever been cleaning up around the house or maybe your room and a little brother or sister makes a mess right behind you? It could be so frustrating when two people are working against each other. In today's lesson, we're talking about the Pharisees say that Jesus is doing his miracles and casting out demons by the power of Satan, the enemy. That would mean that Satan was working against himself. And that would be like somebody making a mess while somebody else is cleaning it up. Let's see how Jesus responds to the Pharisees and the way they accuse them and how they're wrong. If we think about where we were at in yesterday's lesson, we know that Jesus has been doing miracles and helping people all over the place. We also know that not everybody was happy about that. In fact, he didn't get the response that you might expect. The general crowd that witnessed Jesus' miracles were curious, but they weren't super excited about it. In fact, in yesterday's passage, we learned about how Jesus kind of scolded them and said that they didn't even understand what he was doing. And because of their refusal to understand that, that they were going to be judged more harshly than some of the people that didn't even get exposed to what Jesus was doing. And while the crowd didn't really respond excited or angry, the leaders themselves were really upset about what Jesus was doing. We learned yesterday that they were so upset that they try to sneak off and figure out a way to have him killed. This didn't stop Jesus, though. He actually went to help a man who had a demon inside of him, and he was blind and he was mute, meaning he couldn't talk. And Jesus healed him and helped him to become delivered so that the man could both speak and see again. This was a huge miracle, and it revealed how Jesus had power over both the natural world and the supernatural world. The crowds were amazed, but they still weren't even convinced that Jesus really was the Messiah. They were astonished by what he did, but they didn't necessarily believe what he said. They were astounded by what he did, but they still thought that the Messiah was going to be like a military leader like David was. And while the crowd was still trying to figure it out, the leaders themselves had already made up their mind about Jesus. In fact, when they saw that he had delivered the man from a demon, they accused Jesus of doing that by the power of Satan. They just simply could not believe that Jesus was operating with God's power. 
Also, if they admitted to themselves that this really was God operating through Jesus, that it meant that they would be wrong and the things that Jesus was saying about them would be true. And they were just not willing to admit that to themselves. And, you know, Jesus was able to know what they were thinking without them even saying anything, because the Bible says he knew their hearts. They were being pretty secretive about it, but he still knew what was going on. And he didn't let that go. Instead, he confronted them. He tried explaining to them about how foolish it was Because if somebody was attacking their own kingdom, it would cause their kingdom to fall. And that's exactly what they were accusing him of. They were saying that Satan was casting out demons, which also belonged to Satan. And Jesus was trying to help them understand how foolish that sounded. Because they knew that Satan didn't want people to have freedom. He wanted to be powerful over man, not destroy his own kingdom. And they kind of argued with Jesus in a way that made them sound even more foolish. Because if they were saying that the only way that Jesus could cast out demons was through being Satan, then Jesus reminded them that they also were casting out demons. And that meant that they would be doing it with the power of Satan. None of it made any sense. See, Jesus obviously did not cast out demons with the power of Satan, but the only explanation for his power was that he was operating as God himself. And Jesus said to the Pharisees, if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. But they just refused to believe it because if God's spirit performed miracles through Jesus, then Jesus must also be telling the truth. And the Spirit's power revealed that God's kingdom had come in the person of his son, Jesus. The Pharisees were just not willing to admit it. See, instead of proving that Jesus was under Satan's authority, Jesus casting out demons was proof that he had authority over Satan and was more powerful. He was the one that had the power over Satan and could bind him up. It's so sad because the Pharisees would rather lie about who Jesus was than to answer his call for them to change their ways and repent of their own sins. They made up their minds that they were not going to be obedient to what Jesus was calling them to do. And then Jesus goes on to say, He who is not with me is against me. He's explaining that there are only two types of people. Those that are with Jesus, those are the ones that are supporting him, and then those that are against him, those are his enemies. The people that witness this had the challenge of either accepting or rejecting Jesus as their savior. There would be none that were undecided because if they decided not to follow Jesus, they were deciding to go against Jesus. And you know, we all have the same decision to make. You may be on the fence thinking, I don't have to decide to follow Jesus right now. And I guess that's true. You don't. But every moment that you decide not to follow Jesus, you're deciding to follow the enemy. And that's not what God wants for you. God wants you to recognize that he is the one that has the power over evil in this world. And he wants you to experience freedom and the peace that comes from knowing Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, would you help my young friends to recognize that you are for them and you are the one that holds the power over the evil and the darkness of this world, even over Satan and his demons. Lord, I pray that you would help my friends to recognize who you are and how much you love them. Lord, I pray that they would respond to your love right away today and recognize that you came to die for them so that they could have a relationship with God. Lord, I pray for my friends as they seek to learn more about you, that you would reveal yourself to them in a powerful way. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, if you'd like to talk more about this, ask your parents to grab our discussion guide. The link is in the show notes. We'll talk tomorrow. Hey, friends, thanks for listening to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. If you like today's show, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. That's the number one way you can support this show. 
If you're wanting to dive a little bit deeper, you can also join our Patreon community to get our family discussion guides, join our private discussion groups, and have access to bonus content and additional resources every month. Hey, I'm praying for you today. Know that you are so loved. Page architects and engineers think what's possible and deliver big, bold, future-ready design solutions in D.C. and beyond. The sky's the limit with Page. Imagine inspiring workplaces people want to return to, learning environments that attract world-class students and faculty, environmentally responsible from the inside out, health centers designed to make care and lives better, research centers that speed innovation from lab to life. Now you're thinking Page, where big, bold design solutions are made possible. Explore our DC portfolio at pagethink.com.